Going to Ibiza in your 40s is a great idea on paper and in pictures. However, in reality, it's not. This is Every Trade, Behind the Build, episode 59. So welcome back to another episode of Every Trade Behind the Build, episode 59, nearly at 60. These episodes go so fast, but that's because everything just moves so fast in what we do. We have now finished project 849. We've got nothing to show you because it's moved in. What I'm gonna try and do is work out a way of getting in there, maybe shooting some external stuff, maybe getting some pictures of the finished product because the client's own photographer has been in. So, I'm back from the beautiful Isle of Ibiza. I went there for the weekend with Mr. Riddick. Just moving things about. A bit of fresh topsoil going out, I love it. We went over there on business to look at an interesting deal. However, we may have attended a couple of beach parties on the way. And I may be feeling pretty ropey now. However, there's nothing like a bit of blue sky and this yard to cheer me up. We are finally on with the bill, but whilst I've been away, the dig took a decision to get a crusher in. Now, we didn't go for one of the big J45 McClusses that you used to see on, say, Baz's page. We went for a tractor-driven one because it was a lot less money. They came with an operator, and really what we wanted to do we make some kind of 6F2 because we've got somebody that wants quite a lot of that, but also we can then send some of that through our little crusher and it just literally falls through it. So, we're moving stuff about in the yard at the moment. We're making this monster bay, which I'll show you more of in a minute, but work must continue on site. Now Project 849's finished, we've started the Abasoc project, which I'm not actually sure, but we'll call, we'll call it Project Abasoc. Dale went over the human Swiss Army knife last week to dig out the foundations. We didn't show it in the last episode because it was so ram packed. We sent him down to start the strip out and dig out the foundations ready for Adam and Eve to jump on that and get the extension built and Bizzo, AK Sean and all that team to follow up getting the building work started. We're gonna try and bring you something from there every single week, hopefully. But it's hard obviously with logistics because I haven't quite yet got an every trade helicopter. So we can't really just nip there. Hollywood's probably gonna go there once a week, once every couple of weeks and bring you some footage, but the guys might also shoot you some raw footage from over there. But Dale did take his new GoPro that I treated him to, and he's gonna show you how he got on with cousin Alex, actually. Woo! Hi guys, so me and Alex are in Aversock. <laughs> just setting up a bit of a site now. Got a little micro digger. Um, we've got some footings to dig out uh, and a bit of a rip out inside um, but yeah so this is where a bit of an extension is going uh, here so we'll be digging the footings uh, down here and across here um, so yeah we have got to rip all this section out uh, and just set up a bit of a site get it keep people out as we're now digging so uh, yeah Got some bits to put inside, um, just to get the lads ready for when they come down um, for, for getting started inside. So we've got a few walls to take out and yeah, full full um, redo of the whole house. So 
yeah, it's gonna be a nice little job. Nice and have a sock as well. Not the best weather, but it'll do us. Hi right, guys, so footings are dug. I'll have to get the, uh, the inspector out now and get them checked over, but that's that done. Uh, outside, uh, I think we've got a bit of a deal with a farmer to come collect the rubbish, well, the, the, the waste stuff. So yeah, um, I'll head on inside now, start doing the rip out inside, so keep watching. Here we are, so this is the inside of the house. Uh, loads of things happening in there. Uh, so this kitchen is what we're going to be ripping out. This is all downstairs. Um, hello Alex. Um, and then bathroom downstairs, ripping that out as well. Going to be getting the flooring out uh, in most places, carpets that is. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a few walls taken out. Um, obviously a wall taken out for the extension. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, the, yeah, this bathroom, I think there's another toilet and shower room in here, which we're going to pull out also. Yeah. So yeah, have a nice productive two days there. Um, so yeah, keep watching. <laughs> So, that's the kitchen ripped out. Pretty easy job of that. Um, so we're all outside now, but on with the bathroom. So there's two bathrooms downstairs. Um, there's a bathroom and a shower room. So we're gonna try and get those out. Um, and then next will be the carpets. So, yeah, this is the bath, the, well, the shower, shower, shower room. So all this coming out, yeah, there's a few walls coming out, um, but I don't think we'll get on with them today. Yeah, looks like we'll have time. Uh, it was a very early one this morning. We was in for five o'clock, so I was on the road for quarter past four to get in. Uh, but yeah, going at it. Sock. Um, managed to get all the carpets out, all the doors off. Uh, it's downstairs, it's obviously upstairs to do, but I think uh, the Bizzle, Sean, is going to be sleeping up there. What a guy. <laughs> Taking one for the team there because it is mouldy. Um, so, yeah, bathroom downstairs, fully ripped out. Um, yeah. So that's all the carpets, all the doors. Um, carpets in there, bathroom in there. 
kitchen. Uh, we're fully loaded. I say fully loaded, the dig is loaded. Uh, ready for our journey home. Um, yeah, smashed it really. Uh, these, these past two days. A uh, half day on the, uh, the last day today. Um, but yeah, good job. Well done. Uh, first part of Aversot chapter. See you next time. What a guy Dale is. Literally, there's not a lot that guy can't do and I'm pleased we've recruited someone so versatile. Cousin Alex is fitting in perfectly. They've created a bit of a dream team, them two. So, a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned that we've made another investment into a piece of kit that I felt was the missing link in this yard. Not just in the yard, but generally for this business. We want to grow a genuine grab, muck away, and aggregate supply business. And behind this, our first grab, the baby grab, sits our latest investment, which I'm going to show you a little bit later in the episode. But it's not looking like much at the moment, but you'll see where I'm going. And quite a few of you guessed it right. So stay watching if you can, and I'll show you what we've bought later in the episode. Over in Liverpool, it's been a bit lost this in the madness of Project 849 in the yard, but you'll remember we finished Project Adelaide and the students moved in. And a lot of you guys have been saying, you're not really, wow, a bee. A lot of you guys have been saying you've not really seen the end of a project, the payoff. So Alex is now gonna show you the finished Emperor product. Over to you, Mr. Riddick. So after all our hard work, Adley Road is done. Adley Road 2.0 is getting done, which I'm looking at as well. But this one is done. Show reels all complete, and Niall's all done it, so we can show you that. So as I say, you're gonna watch now for the next minute or so uh, what it looks like when it's done, fully dressed, fully finished, and what it's like when we hand it over to the tenant. So have a little look. <laughs> You've seen the blinds, they've been fitted, so you've been following, you've known that we had the idea with the blinds. But on the video, we couldn't get them, we had to film with no blinds. But now they're on, all done, and tenants have moved in. So yeah, you can see there, it looks nice. That's our usual standard layout that we normally go for with the en suites and the, the layout in the kitchen. Uh, it's a pretty standardised model that we, we work towards and build out now. So yeah, all good. Another one done, another one on the books, finished, tenanted, the tenants paying rent. And another one that our investors have been involved with as well. So obviously all the investors that we work with now, you all know your Albers Mokes, you do watch. Nice one, all your funds were going towards that property. 
um, and they're all going to go into the next one again and we'll just keep going once that property's been refinanced which is ongoing now the money will come out uh, and then we'll go into another one again and we'll just keep buying and keep going and keep growing what we're already doing um, and just improving little things that we can because me and Chris are dealing with so much stuff on the property bit at the minute and the com- com- uh, across the companies it's hard sometimes to focus a lot of your energy but when it comes to this time of year now especially for myself gives me a chance to step back and focus a lot more on the businesses and the back end stuff um, which sort of gets put in the back of your mind uh, because it's not as important as the stuff that you need to do now the reactive stuff and that's what I'm trying to not do but I'm just pulling up a fair journey anyway to see how the lads are getting on so yeah back over to Chris in Manchester so yeah it's nice to show you guys what we do on the property side because as I've said in the earlier episodes, pr- property and construction goes hand in hand. I genuinely believe that most builders, tradesmen, should either own property or have investment in some property. And what's been really nice is we've had quite a lot of people off of the back of these episodes investing the Emperor property side that we have. And it's been great for me. And Alex has enabled us to make some purchases, which we're going to reveal down the line and really get that thing scaled up. And it, hey, is good for what we do, but it's good for content as well. And we're gonna try and show you guys the real nitty gritty of property investment and development. Cause there's a couple of ways to go about it. You can actually be on the ground and do it or like the investment, someone invested 50K last week. They don't want to know about it. They just want the return on the investment. They've invested for two years. They're getting 10% on 50 grand for two years. They're gonna get it monthly. They're not gonna roll it up. We're gonna get it monthly. So it works out they're getting about 400 odd quid a month free of charge basically obviously you got a big tax on it but they have to do nothing we've personally guaranteed it me and Alex and so it means we get to carry on growing our business and they get to earn money for money that was sat in the bank rotting away of inflation so yeah so I mentioned before the dig went ahead and we got that crushy you saw that in the opening montage there and what it's made is kind of like this size which isn't great I don't think what I want to produce I want to really do the 40 mil down sort of the recycled tight one MOT however this will then fly through our smaller rubble crusher so much easier we're going to use a riddle bucket because there's still quite a lot of soil in that um, and try and rid a lot of the soil out but we'll load it in to our crusher directly and it does then make a really nice 40 mil down product which at the moment we've been storing over here the yard is all over the place at the moment but you'll see we made a smaller products see what i did there see that white ninja stuff stop myself on over smaller products again it's got a bit of it's probably it probably is about a 40 mil down product that maybe a little bit bigger but the feedback we get is great and it's perfect as a low cost option to the quarried uh, moc which we've also got in the yard but yeah the yard is going nuts at the moment but it's a good nuts if you come around i'll show you what else we're doing we're repairing the conveyor because the con- someone, I won't name names, Dave, more about him in a minute, knocked the motor off the conveyor. So I had to order a new one, but to be honest, it was on the way out. So that's nice that we've actually got that ticked off the list. Again, if it wasn't for Dale, the human Swiss army knife, we probably have to bring an external person in to do it, but Dale and the dig have boxed that. But yeah, we're trying to set up the processing part of the yard where ideally, if come through Hollywood, this absolute beast, the scalper, the K4 will only have to be loaded once. So one operator on a machine, on the pile, loading this, then off it will come the different products. So we're gonna have, obviously, the smaller, almost 40 mil down stuff already, go that straight into our new super bay we're making, which I'll show you in a little bit. This is the oversized stuff, which eventually will feed, control the speed on these belts, that will feed our little crusher, and maybe even a bigger crusher, so we make the 40 mil down stuff from that also. And on the other side, it's gonna pre-screen the soil into a sm- almost, it's, it's almost good enough, but not good enough to turf off. But yeah, but that stuff again, will fly through our other trommel and screener. So at the center of it, the heart will be the big K4 the scalper. That'll be, everything goes into that and out of it, comes almost four or five different sellable or usable products, which is amazing. Over one of our other projects, 
Project Dudley. You saw last week, I linked to it, thinking that Hollywood would get there and shoot a big cinematic version of the crane lifting the ridge beam and the steels up. However, our friends at Sutton Crane Hire are super efficient. They got there early, so Hollywood missed it. One of the guys said, don't worry, I've got it on my phone, but he didn't know the old golden rule of YouTube. You need to shoot it landscape, not portrait. However, we got it and we brought it. People thought we were trying to be clever showing it inside a mobile phone and someone said, oh, that's a bit arty farty, but no, it's the only way really we could show it without looking weird and doing all the blurred backgrounds, which you hate. So we put a little overlay on it on a phone, but at least you saw the start of the project. But this time, Hollywood has made it. And we're gonna try and get there every episode to see how that a loft conversion is gonna take shape. So over to Phil and the boys at Project Dudley. So it's good to have another project underway there. We'll bring you that every week. As I've said, we are getting really busy now, but a couple of episodes ago, I told you that we bought something that I felt was a missing link. It doesn't look much at the moment, but for those of you that guess right, and for those of you who guess wrong, here is our latest toy. So we got a lot of random guesses, but a lot of you also guessed right. We have purchased an eight before tipper. I just felt that we were getting so many requests for over the 15 ton maximum that you can do on the eight before grab. People wanted full loads. We were also having to pay delivery and transport on our aggregate loads. So this just felt like something that we needed. And one came available from a company that I know really well, the Ray boys, you know my friends, they got theirs from there. The guy's sound, it's not new, it's a 2015 plate. However, it's been really well looked after. I know the history of this back to front. I know the fitters that worked on it, the fitters that maintained it. I've got all the PMI records and everything, so I know exactly where it's been and what it's been doing on its lifespan. It's also gone over that kind of 250K mark, which generally, from my research, a lot of stuff has been replaced already. So it's almost like a new truck. It's just literally last week had a new ad blue pump or something. That was a couple of grand or something, the guy said. So yeah, it doesn't look much at the moment. We're just stripping the original wrap of it. But what we're gonna do is make it look exactly like the rest of our fleet. This is getting wrapped on Thursday. That's uh, gonna go exactly like our company colors. And this is gonna get repaired and resprayed. I'll probably get Dale to do it because obviously it's good enough. They get, they get battered anyway, but we'll spray it and the whole sides will get wrapped, uh, sorry, will get covered in our livery and it'll look exactly like the rest of our fleet because you know our fleet is important to us. Our image and brand is important to us. I had rubbish trainers at school, so this is probably why I like having a nice fleet and nice branding. So yeah. I'm really excited about this. It's going on the operator's license. It's gonna be insured for any of the drivers. So it'll probably take us a bit of time to get it up in service. We've got quite a bit of, few, quite a bit of maintenance bits to do. He needs a couple of spare new tires and stuff like that. But 
from probably, I don't know, I reckon a few months ago, I realized that I needed to get a tipper. So yeah, I'm really pleased. It's just another step on the ladder. Eventually, we'll probably have new vehicles, brand new vehicles, but for now, the model doesn't stack for us. We've just not, not got enough volume of work. We haven't got enough customers to justify spending, I don't know how much is a new eight before tip across, 100 grand, something like that, 80 grand, whatever. But yeah, well done if you guessed. Let, know, let us know if you think this was a good purchase. I will make it my work, my drive to get this flat out busy so we're saying we need another one in six months time maybe even a brand new one so that's it four trucks in the fleet now the whole fleet overall is at about 45 now so yeah it's great i'm buzzing with it it's all coming together So yeah, this uh, mega bay is coming together. I'm not really sure what to think about these blocks. I mean, they're a bit all over the show, but this is getting moved eventually to the new plan. But for now, this is how it's going to be. So they'll be all right. I mean, they ain't, they ain't going anywhere, so it'll be fine. But yeah, this is where we're going to keep all the hardcore that'll be sort of 6F2 ready for crushing to 40 mil down. Everything that comes off the scalper will come into here. All that bigger stuff that we've had crushed with the um, tractor driven crusher this week. On that traction-driven crusher, it's hard to say that, the boys from O&J Contracting supplied that and I really appreciate it. they reached out to us, saw that we needed a crusher and uh, brought it along. It's a great bit of kit and uh, I was actually really impressed with it and uh, like I said, the price was super competitive. So, that's it for another episode of Every Trade Behind the Bill. It's been quite hard for me post the beef. I am sweating and not for the right reasons. I need to go home, have a shower, and have a lie down. If you've liked what you've seen, please comment below. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. We're nearly at 12,000, which is a ridiculous amount of subscribers, but we want to keep going. Come back on Sunday, because we've got lots to show you. We've actually got stuff that we've shot that we need to finish and all sorts going on. New jobs starting, all kinds, but yeah. The yard is coming together, it's making us some money. Project 849 has been delivered. The client is buzzing with that. It feels now I can take a deep breath and think about what I'm going to do to see out this year, get this yard flying, get some new projects started and keep bringing the content to you guys. Have an amazing rest of the week. Come back on Sunday, guys. Woo! Get me an Alka-Seltzer. Oh. <laughs>